we've been talking about um, the power uh, of the resurrection, what the resurrection of Jesus Christ means, what it did for us, what, what impact it has on our life, what impact it has on the church. Amen. Um, and uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and verses 12 through 14, it says, Now if Christ is preached, if Christ is preached that he has been raised from the dead, how do some among you say? that there is no resurrection of the dead. But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty and your faith is also empty. Listen, I don't have to say anything else tonight other than this. We, we, we know that it's not empty because we've experienced it. Amen. We've experienced the power, the resurrection power of Jesus in every one of our lives. Amen. You go back and study the lives of the apostles and, and, and the martyrs that have, that have died and have given their lives for the cause of Christ. If there wasn't validity, if there wasn't something to it, they wouldn't have went through all that they went through uh, because of the cause of Christ. There, there, if there was no evidence. And Paul goes on to argue that if the resurrection isn't possible, then Jesus is still in the grave. I think I said this a couple weeks ago. Uh, he's not still in the grave because Tammy and I were there and went in the grave and he's not there amen he, he got, he's he's not there then if if christ hasn't been raised then then our as believers our faith is also useless and we would have we have no hope of eternal life if not even our own savior has gained eternal life but he has and we know all this is true and the resurrection goes on to affirm the truthfulness of Jesus life and his words why because for three and a half years he told the, the disciples over and over and over he told them listen I, I, I'm gonna die and on the third day I'm gonna I'm gonna be raised from the dead I mean that was that has always been the plan and what happened when he died what happened when he died before that, what happened when he died? Everything that y'all are saying is true, but that's not what I'm looking for. I, that's part of it. They, flew, they, they scattered. He told them and told them and told them and told them. I'm going to die. And, and, they, and, and even Peter got rebuked. Actually, the spirit motivating Peter was Jesus turned around and rebuked him because Peter said, listen, you're, you're not going to die on my watch. That basically is what he said over my dead body. You're not. And Jesus rebuked the spirit that was in him because Jesus knew that death had to come in order for you and I to be uh, uh, have our, our, our salvation purchased because the bible says this without the shedding of blood there is no remission of sin there's the blood of jesus was was the payment for sin we're gonna we're gonna celebrate the lord's supper on sunday we're gonna celebrate communion and and it's all about the broken body of the lord jesus christ and the shed blood of jesus what he has done for you and i through his atoning work at the cross Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He is. Not, not anybody else. He is. Because he rose, you and I have the certainty that our sins are forgiven. And because he rose, he lives and represents us before God. How many of you know that today Jesus is your advocate before the Father? Isn't that amazing? We, we, have an, uh, we have an advocate, we have a, a defense attorney on, on our behalf that is, that is going before God. And so because he arose from the grave, we have certainty that our sins have been forgiven. And because he rose, he lives and represents us as our advocate before God. And because he rose, he defeated death, hell, and the grave. And we know because of all of that, you and I are going to be raised also. 
I'm just, I'm, I'm still banking on the rapture. Amen. I, mean, I, I just, I just think that'd be a rush. Right? I mean, it'd be pretty cool to just come blowing up out of the ground. I mean, I, but to just be driving a truck down the road or, or what? He gone. What in the world? Isn't that going to be something else? You want to talk about some chaos? There's going to be some chaos on that day. <laughs> wow. One of these days and it won't be long. Christ's resurrection also guaranteed both his promise to us and his authority to make it. But we have to take him at his word. Where we get in trouble right here. Because we want to pick and choose what the Word says to us. We want to pick and choose, but we can't do that. We, if God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. Romans 5 and 10. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of His Son, much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by His life. I want to talk about our faith in, re, in, in relationship uh, to his resurrection. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 17 goes on to say, And if Christ is not risen, your faith is futile, and you're still in your sins. How I many of you feel like you're still in your sins sometimes? I mean, it's just like, what in the world? We, we have been set free from that. Here, uh, here's uh, one, of your, one of your answers right here is, is Paul declared that if Christ has not been raised, then your faith is useless. Useless is your word that you're, you're looking for there. We have no reason to have faith if we take the resurrection out of that faith. And so in addition to taking away the hope of, of a future life with God, refusing to believe that Jesus rose from the grave means that Christians are still under condemnation for our sin. I mean, you know what it says in, in Romans? It says in Romans, I think it's chapter 8, it says that there is therefore now no. It's interesting that they put the word now in there. Because before there was. When you were living in your sin, it wasn't Christ that condemned you. Your, your, own, your very life condemned you. But because now we're children of God, there is therefore now no condemnation. And, and I love the way that the word says uh, to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. There are those, who, there, there's therefore now no condemnation to those who walk according to the spirit and not the flesh. Amen? I, 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 I've, I've got a message in my archives somewhere. Maybe I ought to dust it off. It's called the if factor. The if factor. If is a very, very big word. If is a very big word. See, if, if Jesus died and, and was never raised, then his death did nothing to accomplish justification. God raising him, though, from, from the dead showed that God accepted his sacrifice. And so if God left Jesus in the grave, then the sacrifice wasn't accepted, and none of us have received cleansing from sin. So here's another one of your answers. The wages uh, for sin is death. Everything has a payday. Everything has a payday, and the wages of sin is death. Romans chapter 6 and verse 23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God. <laughs> huh. The gift of God. You know the cool thing about a gift, Bill? And it, it's free. It's free. The gift of God is eternal life, 
But again, here's one of those little words that's really, really big. In Christ Jesus our Lord. It's in him we live and move and have our being, right? So to be... To still be under condemnation then means that all people will be given the ultimate penalty for our sins. But in Paul's day, Christianity often brought uh, a person persecution. It brought ostracism from family. And, and in a lot of cases, it, it brought poverty. <laughs> to be a Christian, that's, which is where we get our word Christian, to be a Christian was, was not a, a, a good thing. In, in that culture, in that society, to be, to be a Christ follower. You weren't, you weren't looked up to. You were looked down on because you were interrupting and messing with the status quo. Well, I was just going to say that. I was battling in my mind about making that comparison because why do you think our political parties are scratching and clawing and fighting to hang on to what they've established over the last 75 to 100 years, and they, they don't want to lose it. Amen? I said it last week or sometime that, you know, they go into office making a couple hundred thousand dollars a year, and they come out of, of office multi-gazillionaires, they got a good thing going, man. They don't want that messed up. They don't want it messed up. They, it's the, it's, they're, they ought to, they're supposed to be working for us. They're supposed to. Do, do, you, do you even realize that? Have we, been, have we been coddled to sleep until we don't even realize that they work for us? If I didn't perform well on my job, who I worked for would fire me. Anybody ever been fired? That's a lot of fun. <laughs> that's, that's a good time. <laughs> Listen. There were very few tangible benefits from being a Christian in that society. It's one of your one of your answers. There were very few tangible benefits from being a Christian in that society, and it was certainly was not a step up the social or the career ladder. Even more important is the fact that if Christ had not been resurrected from the dead, we as Christians could not be forgiven for our sin and would have no hope again of eternal life. And in many places in the world today, those who believe in Christ still pay a heavy price. Listen, I'm not, I'm not looking forward to harsh, um, what's the word, when they come against the church? Persecution. I, I'm, 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 I'm not, I don't like persecution. I don't like confrontation. I don't like all of that stuff. If I get pushed into a corner, then that's a whole different deal. But uh, by and large, I, I, I don't like confrontation. But if we don't start being the church, it's, it's coming to our, to our, to our, to our land. We're, we're seeing right now. I watched it on the TV the other, uh, the other day uh, prior to the debate where, where on our soil, rallies and protests for the Palestinians. I'm, I'm not, I'm not anti-Palestinian as, as the people, but I'm anti what they stand for. Amen? But because there's still this thing in America, at least for some, called the freedom of speech, they can have their rallies and say all their stuff and, and, you know, death to America. If you don't like America, leave. 
Go back to that country and try that there. Try that there and see what happens. Yeah, that's, yeah, we don't even want to think about that. True. It's true. Every time I preach on, uh, when, when Christ said, on this rock, I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. Every time I think about that, I, I remember when Tammy and I was in Israel and, and when, when the, our guide was talking about in, in that place where it, that sermon probably took place or the near as they can tell and and the the place literally there's literally is a place uh, called the gates of hell and i can just see jesus pointing up there because of the sacrifices and they the all the stuff that they did killed babies and virgins and all this stuff and threw them in this abyss Why is that? What? Has nothing to do with money. Has everything to do with the power behind the person. You ever notice we don't use Buddha as a cuss word? Yeah, but, but, and I see the point that, you, that you're trying to get to, but again, it really doesn't have much to do with the money. It has to do with the motivation behind it that's changed. Because you have changed. Your value system has changed. Your, your directive and your direction has changed. I'm, I'm, the old things have passed away, amen? And behold, all things become new. You know, we don't, we don't go around, people don't go around cussing, saying, oh, Mohammed, or oh, Harry Krishna, or, you know. We, why? Because there's no value in those names. There's no value there. But when you invoke the name of Jesus, when, when you, when you, you, you there's, there's, there, you're, you're right, there is power in his name. There, there is no spirit behind those those other names they're still you can go back to their graves they're still there amen where am i at man i left romans six twenty three an hour ago That's where I left it, isn't it? No, here we go. <clears throat> what I said was that, was, was that some are still dying for their faith on foreign lands. And, and if we don't become the church and, and let our voice be heard and our actions matter for the kingdom, it, it's going to be right here. And... Uh, Here's another one of your answers. For many, for many, Christianity is little more than a convenient faith. For so many in our, in our world, especially in America, Christianity is little more than a convenient faith. Look at it this way. 
for very for for many it's really people are just looking to buy fire insurance i don't want to go to hell but at the same time i don't want my life to have to really change and be you know radical if you will have to go vote or something did i did i say that right out loud If following Christ, ooh, if, if following Christ does not place you at odds with the world around you in some way, then you might want to examine your faith and the depths of your roots. Because we are to be in the world, but not of the world. Amen? We're to be in this world. Why are we to be in this world? Well, according to Jesus, we are to be the salt. We're to add flavor. We're to be the light. We're to, we're to be his example. We're to, we're to be the reflection of Christ in, in our world. The, the reality is, is that Christ desires us to live our lives through him. He, he desires that. In Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20, it says, I've been crucified with Christ, Paul speaking here, and it says, it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So in several short phrases here, the Apostle Paul captures the, the breathless wonder that believers experience as the realization dawns that we are no longer living our life. If you think you are living your life, you are sadly mistaken. And, and it might be why things are a mess in your life. Because my life is, is, is hidden in him. I'm no longer living my life, but I, I have surrendered to the, the author of life who now lives his life in and through me. I, I, there's, only, there's really only one thing that I desire, and that is one day to stand before the Lord and have him say, well done. Good and faithful service. I, I watched an interview on the, uh, just an excerpt of, the, of an interview of the, the guy, I don't know what his name is, but he's the guy that plays Jesus on The Chosen. Whatever that guy's name is, you know who I'm talking about. Uh, and the, the, um, the, the interviewer asked him this question. He said, if you have opportunity to ask Jesus anything, what would you ask him? And without missing a beat, he said, I would ask him, how did I do portraying you? How did I do? And, and I mean, you kn I, I knew instantly he was not talking about necessarily his role as an actor in a TV series. Although that's part of it. But man, how would your life be different if that was your motivation? How did I do, how did I do living my life for your glory and for your honor? Because at the end of the day, folks, that's all that's really going to matter. It, it just really isn't. The amount of scripture we have memorized isn't really going to matter. The amount of money you've given to the work of the Lord really isn't going to matter. Your house, your car, your kids, that stuff's not going to matter. It's all important, but it's not going to matter when you stand before the Lord and he says, what did you do with me? Amen? 
So Paul goes on and continues his thought from verse 19, and he says, uh, for, for the, I, I, I through the law died to the law that I might live to God. And so in, uh, in the perfect tense of the verbs here, it, it indicates that something that has happened in the past but influences the present. And, and I, I want to look at it, look, have you look at it this way, because something happened in our past but because of what happened in our past, it is now influencing my present. What Jesus Christ did 2,000 years ago plus uh, on the cross, that's in the past. But man, what's it doing in your life and my life today? It's, an, it's influenced my life. <laughs> oh, I, think about, I think about school teachers that I maybe harassed in school Ow. bus drivers Yeah. Yeah. Change your change your life. It's what he does. It's what he does. So something in the past happened and it's influencing our present and and Christ completely fulfilled the 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 law in the past tense and this act really influenced Paul in, a, in the present who is, was an imperfect human that could not keep the law. So because of the death of Christ, the, the law no longer had a hold on either of them. And it's a profound relief that Paul must have felt because now he didn't have to try and fulfill all the aspects of the law, which you could never do anyway. What a frustration. He no longer needed to fear that after spending his entire life studying and trying to keep the law, somehow he might still miss God. Isn't that amazing? The cross of Christ shows that although the law had to be kept, it was fulfilled by, the, by a perfect human. Christ himself paid sin's penalty for imperfect humans. Aren't you grateful for that tonight? Being crucified with Christ refers to the conversion experience, a once-for-all transaction that has ongoing results. We don't have to be crucified with Christ again every day, but we do have to walk with him every day. We have to stay very close. We have to repent every day. Paul had to repent every day, didn't he? Or was he just needed some more words to write? As Christians... We must daily take up our cross and follow him, but this is referring to the responsibilities of discipleship, which is why we're in this Bible study tonight, to, to learn discipleship. We are required to daily withstand our sinful human desires. So I'm going to present these two questions, and I'm going to close, and, and next week we're going we're to address these two questions. Number one, who lives in us once we become believers? Obviously, the answer is Christ. So, but now, but how, how do you think that this might change your life? It is no longer I that live, but Christ lives in me. Amen? We're going to look at those uh, next week. Um, any questions or comments? about about tonight's bible study i'm only 10 minutes late i did all right i did all right yes judy right
right. Yeah. If you don't unwrap the gift, and it doesn't do you any good. Amen. All right. Well, ladies, Bible study in the morning, huh? Men, noon right here at the church. We'll head for the. Or what did I say? Well, I was going to say it. I was going to say it noon Friday. That's what I was going to say. I was going to say that. Yeah, you're welcome to come here tomorrow at noon, too. We'll find something for you to do. <laughs> Church, we serve a God that loves us. Man, does he love us. He's long-suffering, all that stuff. He, he died for us. Let's live for him, amen? Father, I thank you for this precious group of people that you've assembled here tonight and i pray god that you would just move in us oh god help us to understand and to realize lord that it is no longer i that live but christ in me and so lord help us to to walk that out in the days and the weeks and the years to come should you tarry lord god i i, I pray again tonight for tom pray god you'd raise him up God, I pray you completely rebuke and drive out every bit of cancer that is in him. God, in Jesus' name, I pray you restore his liver and restore every, every aspect of his body that's been influenced and infected by this horrific disease, God. Lord, I continue to pray for Ray tonight. Lord, I pray you bless him and touch him and completely heal his body. Lord, heal his neck and his back and all those things, God. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. God, we love you. And I know there are many others, Lord, tonight that need a touch in their body, Father God. And I pray, Lord, that you'd meet every need. I pray, God, you'd heal every hurt, every broken heart. God, every downcast spirit tonight, every, 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 every emotion that is just down, I pray, God, that you'd raise them up. Lord, let the joy of the Lord be our strength, God. And I thank you. I pray for your mercies to be new in the morning, God. Grateful for that. I pray each one of us would have a safe journey home tonight, God. I pray that you'd bring us back together, the ladies tomorrow, the men on Friday and Saturday, God. And then Sunday, Lord, I pray, God, for a, a mighty moving of your Holy Spirit in this place. God, I pray for the anointing of God, the, the Shekinah glory of God to fill this house on Sunday, Lord. I pray, God, for lives to be changed. I pray for sinners to get saved in Jesus' name. And Father, I just thank you for all these things. In Jesus' name, and everybody said amen and amen. God bless you. God go with you. Have a great rest of your week. See you later.